Hey, what's up everybody, and welcome back to The Villager Lab. Now, as you may have seen, I recently posted a video where I used AI to add new villagers to Animal Crossing. In that video, I showed pretty much every usable villager that the AI made, except for one. In one of the generations, the AI spit out this image, and I immediately fell in love with the idea on the left. Not so much that guy on the right. Sorry, guy on the right. Even though it's a little creepy looking, the thing on the left immediately struck me as a robot pig. I thought this was really cool, because I was already planning on having a robot villager in the game, but this kind of solidified that it was going to end up being a pig. But there's already plenty of other robot villagers in the game, so I knew I had to come up with something more unique than just a robot pig. So I'm going to get started working on textures, and I'll explain what my idea is. So all the robot villagers are a little bit different from each other, but they all have one unifying feature, which is the number on the back of their head. They never really say what these numbers mean, but I think most people assume that they're like production numbers or like a serial number or something like that. So for example, Ribot has 59 on the back of his head, so that would mean that he was like the 59th robot villager made. So with sort of that mindset, um, I immediately, and I'm sure a lot of other people thought this as well, what would the first robot villager look like? So that's sort of the plan for this villager. I don't know exactly how it's going to look yet, but I know I want it to be, you know, kind of looking like it's breaking down and maybe starting to rust and have some stains on it and stuff like that. Just something that makes it look like it was the first villager that was ever made. I want this pig to look like the other robot villagers, so I'm going to kind of steal some of the design elements from the other robots and implement them into this, of course, putting kind of my own twist and spin on it. Just from kind of looking at all the other robot villagers side by side, um, immediately you notice that they've got like the darker lines and then a bunch of bolts I assume they are, or screws or something like that. And it looks like maybe it's supposed to be pieces of metal bolted together. Um, so I'm going to stick with that in my design, just have it so that it looks like it fits with everything else. I brought the model here into Blender, um, it's a little bit easier to draw like that. I just want to get the basis down for where I want lines to be, obviously this can change later, but just have something to go off of. I think this kind of Y shape on the back of the head would be something good. Um, it kind of fits with the flow of the head and it doesn't seem quite as like angular if I was trying to go straight across or straight up and down or something like that. I'm just going to focus on the back of the head for now, not even the body or anything, and just try to get the back of the head kind of zoned in so that I can have an idea of what everything's supposed to look like and then I can take those certain design elements and just put them everywhere else on the body. So with this particular robot being the first robot villager, and then now we have Cephalobot who has 83 on the back of his head, uh, there's a big space in between the first robot villager made and then Cephalobot who we can assume is the most recent, I, we don't know. I like the idea of this robot being a little more rough around the edges and then getting left by the wayside and kind of, you know, rusting out and hasn't really had as much care taken to it and stuff like that. That's kind of the story that I want to go with, that I kind of want to portray with this villager. And the way I'm going to try to tell that story is I know that I want to have like rust and stuff around the bolts and within the crevices where like the pieces of metal are supposed to meet and stuff like that. I also want to have maybe some scratches or some cracks and then have lots of discoloration, maybe as oil stains or something like that. I'm not really sure what exactly it would be, but just something to kind of portray that story without you having to know the story. <laughs> I don't know why I'm trying to give a sad backstory to a robot pig, but... What I'm doing now is using a dark color with a low opacity, so it's going to sit essentially on top of the texture that we have right now, and it's going to add some discoloration that's going to make things look more interesting than just being gray. It's going to be gray, but then also dark in some areas, and your eye can be kind of drawn to certain parts. Yeah, so this is kind of what I had in mind. I also made it so that the one on the back of her head is a little bit rubbed off, you know, over time. I assume it may be paint or something like that. It's gotten rubbed off a little bit in the corner. I may have to go a little bit harder on that. I'm not sure how well it'll show up in the game, but uh, this is the idea that I had. I also went ahead and added a little bit of like rusty color to those areas that I was talking about. I think that'll also just add a little bit of interest and once again, tell that story that I'm trying to tell. Yeah, that's pretty close to what I had in mind. I'll definitely have to darken up those stains because you can't really see them, like especially if you're far away. But other than that, I think we're on the right track. Obviously, the robot villagers are very shiny because they're made out of metal. So what I need to do is use the mix textures. And what these things are is it essentially tells the texture how shiny and reflective things are. Just as a little bit of an example, here is a robot villager's mix texture um, side by side with just a regular villager's texture. Obviously this doesn't mean anything to us, but within the game, those different colors basically denote how much reflection to do. So that green 
means more reflection as opposed to the orange, which means don't reflect light quite as much. I don't mess with mixed textures too much, but I'm pretty sure that this is all that I need to do. That's at least what I've heard, but I could be wrong. Whenever I pull it into the game, we'll be able to see. Okay, so it is reflecting light more so than like a villager's fur, but um, you can tell especially whenever you pull in another robot villager, it doesn't look like metal. It doesn't look shiny. It's just reflecting a little bit of light. So I need to try to figure that out. I think what I'm going to do instead is work on the face and then see if I can figure something out a little bit later on. But I want to get the basis for everything going and then I'll figure out the metal stuff. So I had a couple ideas for the eyes. If you notice with the other robot villagers, their eyes move just kind of like other regular villagers do, not really robotic. So what I assume is that they have better articulation. You know, they're, they're more advanced, so they're able to move their eyes like that. With this being the first villager, my thought process would be that maybe they don't have that technology yet and their eyes can just stay one size. Of course, this leads to a little bit of a problem because the eyes are where the villager emotes the most and if it just stays the same all throughout, that would be like super boring. Uh, you can't really tell when they're shocked or when they're happy or when they're sad or something like that. So I had a different idea in mind. I want to use colors. Basically, certain eye emotions, quote unquote, are going to be assigned to a certain color. So for example, the eye that looks like it would be happy would be assigned to green. Um, the eye that looks like it's mad would be assigned to red. So that way, whenever the villager starts looking angry, instead of it just being boring white eyes and you can't really tell that it's mad, instead it's going to have eyes that turn red. So you can tell, oh, red is the angry color, so this villager is angry. I thought this would be something like really unique for the villager that would, you know, let a little bit more personality come through as opposed to just being a robot pig. I sort of stole this idea from Roswell. His eyes change direction and they change color sometimes just depending on like his, his emotions. So I wanted to steal something like that because that really just adds a lot more character to an otherwise just, you know, boring look. So I really wanted to do something like that. I'm going to sort of follow the same thing that I did with the lines on the back of the head for the front of the head. So I'll basically have a Y shape that looks like it meets at the top. So basically it'll be like a piece of metal is on the top and then two pieces of metal that connect to the sides or something like that. And then the last thing I want to do with the eyes is add a crack to the glass. I think that's just going to keep, you know, reinforcing the idea that it's an old villager. It's sort of falling apart, all that stuff. I think, you know, once again, it's just going to keep trying to tell that story. This is pretty much what I had in mind. I obviously have to still add the bolts and stuff, but I'm kind of hoping that the bolts make it look a little bit less empty. I don't really want to do overkill with like all the lines and bolts and stuff on the face, but right now it definitely looks empty. It looks emptier than I would want it to look. So I'm going to see if the bolts make it look better. If not, I guess I'll have to add some more lines or figure something else out. Yeah, I added bolts and it still kind of looks empty. It's mainly in that cheek area. I think it's because you can't really see the mouth super well, so it just looks like there's nothing on the bottom half of the face. Uh, maybe I'll add some more lines. Like I said, I don't want to do like overkill with the lines, but I'm not really sure what else I could do. I might just go to the other villagers and try to get some inspiration from that or something. So I noticed that both on Ribot and on Cephalobot, they both have little vents on the side of their face. So I think I'm going to take that, um, that kind of idea and put that in those empty areas. I think that'll help to fill it out, and then once again, it'll make it more in line with the rest of the villagers. Oh yeah, that's gonna look really good. It definitely fills in a lot of that space, and I think lines would have looked kind of weird. It just would have been too much, and those vents are like wide enough that it takes up a good amount of space, but also has a little bit more difference as opposed to just being another line, another line, another line, and it would get boring. You can see I also added something to the nose just once again to fill out some of that empty space, but um, I also put some lights in the ears. I thought that that purple would look kind of nice and just add some color to the villager. It's also a little bit of like an homage or a nod to the original AI picture because the ears in that picture are purple and blue. So I kind of wanted to, you know, put a nod towards that AI picture since it's what inspired everything. I like the design of it, but I, it definitely needs to be more metal. I thought at first I could get away with it, but... It definitely needs to be more reflective, especially if you've got another robot villager next to it. You can easily tell that that's just like a, a regular pig texture that's turned silver. So I need to try to figure that out. The issue is like I can take literally the textures from a robot villager and place them on this pig villager and it still doesn't look right, which means it doesn't have anything to do with the textures, <laughs> which is not fun because that means it's something else and something that I really haven't used a lot. I think I might know um, what I need to do for it but I'm not 100% sure, we'll see. 
Okay, I think I figured it out. I'm pretty sure I figured it out. If not, I really don't know. But there's a sort of hidden section, I guess you could say, here in Switch Toolbox um, that is called Parameters. And I've had to use this once before whenever I made that glowing ghost cat for my Halloween special a little while back. I actually had to go in there and find some stuff out, so that's the only reason that I knew to look in here. I'm pretty sure that this is the area that I need to go in. I'm going to double check these parameters with the parameters of like a robot villager, see if they match up. If not, I would assume that it's probably this. Yeah, I just checked, they don't match up, and I mean you can even see there's like material metalness, material roughness, stuff like that. That, to me, I would assume means that whenever you change those values it either turns up or down how metal the material is or you know how rough the material is stuff like that i'm going to mess with this a little bit i may end up just copying um, from the robot villager stuff putting it in the game and i think that should fix it but i will see in a second <laughs> okay yeah that's definitely not right i don't know if maybe i typed in a number wrong or something i also noticed that there's another section called like shader info or something like that and it's a very long list and it also does not match up so I really don't want to type that all by hand I'm gonna see if I can figure something else out I'm not really sure what to do to make it look metal but I'm pretty sure it's got something to do with this okay long story short I figured it out it was actually super easy um, it did have to do with those parameters and shader info and all that but all that I had to do was just copy the material from the uh, robot villagers and then just put the material over onto my pig villager and that was it. I didn't have to like hand by hand like copy and paste what the numbers would be. That was that would have been too much work and I probably did more work than I even needed to do. But on the bright side, it does shine now. Let me show you. I mean, obviously it's not the right color, but the fact that it's even reflecting light and shining at all is is good because I've... I spent about a day trying to figure this out, and <laughs> it was such a simple fix that now I feel kind of stupid for even like not knowing how to do that, but I think I'm going to take a break for now and then come back and get all the textures finished up and everything like that. I'm just glad to have this figured out. I'm going to go ahead and do some like refinement of the textures, you know, some of the stuff looks a little bit too big, some of the stuff doesn't look right, so I'm going to refine the textures and get them to be finalized, but let's first go and pick out a name. Um, I'll admit, I don't have to think too hard about this name because it was the first thing that I chose for this villager. As soon as I saw the picture and I knew that I wanted to do it for Villager Lab, I came up with a name. I don't want to spoil it yet, I'll let you guys see it once we get to the big villager reveal at the end, but just know that before I had a design, before I had anything, I had the idea for the name, so I'm really excited about the name. For some reason Sprocket doesn't have it, but Cephalobot and Ribot both have like pun names based on what they are and then the fact that they're a robot so ribot is like ribbit the frog sound and then bot like robot so i wanted to do something similar of course you got to have a pun name for your robot villagers except sprocket for some reason but i was thinking a while for it i came up with a couple different ones i finally settled on one um, i'll let you see it now yeah cyborg this is probably my favorite name that i've done so far uh, cyborg boar i think it all just it works so well Originally, I was thinking of name it Swineborg, but that was a little too clunky, and then I ended up going to Cyborg. I think the name fits super well. Obviously, it's not a Cyborg, and it's a pig, not a boar, but, you know, the idea is there. I still really like it. It's a good pun. Uh, the name flows pretty well, and Cyborg is great. I don't think I've mentioned it yet. I know I keep calling her her, but uh, I want her to have a female personality type. Because for some reason all the other robots are males. I guess it doesn't really matter because they're robots. They shouldn't have gender in the first place. But I wanted to do something a little bit different. Add a little bit of <laughs> diversity to the robots. In terms of personality types, um, of course not peppy. Normal, I guess, would work. Um, I guess sisterly would also kind of work. I don't know. The, the female villagers don't really have the best selection when it comes to personality types. They're all a little boring. I think the males definitely take the cake on the uh, personality differences. I just did a sisterly last time, and I don't think she would really be snooty, so let's go ahead and make her a normal personality. In terms of clothes, I'm thinking this moldy dress would probably work. It would make sense with the idea that she's been, you know, left behind to rot in the dust and all that type of stuff. So I think that should probably be her starting clothes. I think that would make the most sense. And with that all picked out, I think it's time that we show off our new pig villager, Cyborg. I'm 
Honestly, I'm really surprised at how much I like Cybor. I wouldn't really say that she's cute, like I don't think of her as a cute villager, but I could see people wanting her on their island because of how unique she is. I really love the fact that the eyes change color. I mean, if this was actually in the game and you walked up and started talking to her for the first time, that would really catch you off guard, but like in a good way. You can see it better once it starts getting really dark or it's a very dark room, but I actually made it so that the eyes and a little bit in the ears actually glow. So it looks like there's light emitting out of them. Um, all the other robot villagers do that, so I wanted to make sure that I did that with her. I thought that that would just be, once again, just another cool thing to see once it turns nighttime and you see her eyes glowing. You're like, okay, wow, that's just, you know, more stuff to keep finding out about the villager. I think I want to do what I did last time and ask you guys what you think her phrase should be because I got some cool suggestions last time and... You know, you guys gotta pull some of your weight around here. I just, you know, I, I made the whole villager. You guys can do something. My girlfriend suggested that the phrase be oink, but the O and the I are zero and one. So, you know, it's it's a couple layers. You know, some robot speak is binary, and it's also zero, one, like she was the first villager. I really like that phrase. I think that phrase is cool, but I want to hear what you guys have to say, if, if you can come up with something pretty cool as well. Also, of course, if you want to draw art, feel free. Also, send it to me if you do. I'd love to see it. You can send it to me over on Twitter or on Instagram. It'll be in the description. Uh, but other than that... I appreciate you guys watching this far, and I'll see you guys next Villager Lab.